Hello, in this PCSX2 setup video, I am going to show you how to set up the PlayStation 2 emulator on Windows. I noticed my previous setup video for PCSX2 on Windows was outdated. The interface has changed, you know, there's a newer version out, and just in general, there's a, you know, new improvements, new features, new interface, and I thought I'd create an updated video for you guys. So, first of all, I just want to say this video is not condoning piracy. It is for educational purposes only. Make sure for legal purposes that you own a PS2 and the games that you will be emulating. Okay, so first of all, you need to go ahead and go to pcsx2.net. All links will be in the description that I go to. And, you know, it's good to go to the compatibility and have a look, is your game compatible? So... Over 98% of the games, you know, it's like 99 point something percent are playable or perfect. So perfect is obviously ideal, but playable is you more than good enough. And you literally just search the game. So I'm going to be doing Crash Nitro Kart as the test game. Do, do, do. Yeah, there we go, Nitro Kart. It is considered playable. And that's the game. And I'll recommend that you go to the wiki page because on here you'll have some more updates in case there's any problems. There were some known issues, but they've been fixed. So that's something, you know, worth checking out. And there's a bit more information. Feel free to check that. And, you know, people testing it on different configurations. Okay, so next go to download. And you don't want the stable release because that still downloads 1.6. And 1.6 is the older interface. You want to go to the nightly releases it actually works really well to be fair even though they say it might be buggy for the most part it's really good so go to latest nightly so you get free for windows so you get avx2 qt qt is just like the like a c++ framework that's used and that's being used to help create like the interface there's qt and there's sse for qt all have the new interface uh, honestly um i mean i would like some help in figuring this out I don't know the difference between QT on its own and one of these other ones. From what I can tell, there's I can't find a difference. Or maybe it's just an auto selector. But between AVX2 and SSE4, the a newer CPU will support the AVX2 instruction set. A older CPU will only support the or won't support AVX2, might support AVX and like SSE4. And then you'll need this one to find out. First of all, just search for computer. Go to system properties and in here find your processor name. Mine is this right here, so 3930K. You literally just Google it. If you have a AMD CPU, same process, Google it. You might need to put AMD at start or Intel at start and then go to the official website. Just go down to where it says instruction set. Should be here soon. Here we go, instruction set extensions and it's sse 4.2 and intel avx i don't have avx2 so that means i have to use this particular one avx2 if you have a newer cpu and your cpu supports this instruction set you know use you know the extension use this one it has better better performance so if i click that you'll start downloading it's very quick so it's a seven zip file so you want to download seven zip Again, I'll provide a link in the description. So it's 7-zip.org. Download the 64 or 32-bit. And again, you can find that out by going to System Properties. And if it's a 64-bit operating system, then download 64-bit. If it's a 32-bit, download 32-bit. Actually, actually, it's all 64-bit only. So yeah, you're going to have to download the 64-bit version. And, or you might as well, because at the end of the day, no point download 32-bit if you have 64-bit anymore. It's not much point. So if we click that, you just open this up. It's a pretty, you know, standard installation. You know, mine's detected it to that folder because I've already got it installed there. If I do that, there we go. That's how you install it. Now, we need to extract this. Right click it, go to 7-zip. If 7-zip doesn't appear here, just restart your computer and you should do. Go to extract to, because that way it creates a folder. Otherwise, if you click extract here, you know, it puts all these files and folders in the you know over here which ain't good and uh, we can delete this now and now what we need to do is we need to put some bios files in there first of all just launch it up and you'll create a bunch of extra folders you close it down 
there's a BIOS folder. We need to add our BIOS files. Again, I think you know, for legal purposes, I can't you know, show you how to get these. Honestly, if you just Google <laughs> PS2 BIOS download, you get it. It's not hard to do. And in general, if you have any questions about any part of this video, feel free to post on the Discord group link in the description. And go to here, go to BIOS, paste everything that we copied. There we go. And you obviously need games as well. You could put it in a games or ROMs folder here. I've got it in a separate location. And let me show you. I've got it in. I've got, a, I've got them scattered all over the place. But I've got some over here in games in my old PCSX2 installation, which is I need to move it from here to be fair. So these are all my games. They're in ISO format. Again, to get the games, you can literally just Google name of the game, space PS2, space download. You'll, it won't be hard to find. Okay, so now if we launch up PCSX2. There we go. And if we click start BIOS, that sound brings back memories. You're just hoping that they, you would actually launch the disk up. So if I just do, 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 shut down. Okay, that's fine. So that means the BIOS is working, it's all detected. Now let's add a game directory. So click add game directory. And I remember it was on the D drive, games, PCSX2, games, click select. It says, do you want to do it recursively? This just means every folder within it, it will check as well in case of some extra organization. You got to just click yes. There we go, it's detected it. So it gives you a little overview about the compatibility. Four stars means it's playable, five is, you know, you know perfect. And for each one, you can right click, you know, check the properties of the game. You can do some specific properties that are unique for this particular game. Feel free to enable achievements using retroachievements.org as well. And, but I'll go over these settings globally, but you can change them per game as well. You can set, you know, a cover image. You can, you know, download that if you want to. You can go to the directory if you can't remember where it was, but you have already added it and you can load a state file but for the most part we can leave that as is and if you want to add another oop, i will just launch the game up if you want to add another directory you literally just do, 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 do. just reduce this about down a bit just right click here add search directory next what we want to do is go to settings and if we just go to interface in here there's a few settings that you can have a look at. You know, feel free to mess around with the themes. You know, the update channel, recommend nightly. You can up check for updates. Start full screen if you want the game to by default start on full screen. You can add a new game list here as well. You can obviously check the BIOS stuff out. Emulation again. You can change the speed of fast forward, which is pretty cool, especially with games like Black. You know, where they have a huge what's it called? You know, it has that issue where you just can't skip stuff, but you can change the fast forward speed, which is really, really good. And uh, you can go to graphics, change the renderer, and you can, Vulkan is probably the recommended one. It's automatic by default, but Vulkan will probably give you the best performance. I'll recommend that and default for the adapter, otherwise, unless you've got multiple. Feel free to mess around with these settings, like the aspect ratio. Recommend that you can leave you on auto. You can enable a widescreen patch, uh, but always Google it, see if it works well with your game or not. Uh, you can enable VSync, so it doesn't, you know, go, you don't get screen tearing. Rendering, you can inc increase the internal resolution so things look sharper. Obviously, you'll need a more powerful PC for this. I recommend trying your native. If the game works on native well, then just up it slowly, maybe to, to like two, then maybe three. And four, maybe four is too much. You go to 3.5, you find 3.5 is a good, sweet spot. And honestly, most of your settings leave as default unless you know that a particular game really needs it. And you know, you can that's pretty much it for the most part. You can enable FXAA, which is anti aliasing, it gets rid of that sort of jagged, you know, stare effect on you know, lower resolution older games. And like I said, for the most part, just leave this as is. In audio, make sure some sort of output is selected. And memory card, it should create them by default. If it doesn't, click create. 
and network i would do a separate video on that you can have a look at the folders if you want to you can always over change them you can store cheats somewhere else you can store save state somewhere else and again feel free to enable you know achievements you'll need to log into retro achievements dot also create an account on there one second i just wanna i can't really see much so, so yeah all you'll have is let me uh, i can't really reduce it but all you will actually have is the close button and you can actually click x and it will save it the final thing that we need to do is set the control so if we click settings again and sorry okay nothing you can you know change it from game list to game grid obviously if you have you know icons it's really cool looking at it like so you can do a cover downloader as well but again i'm gonna leave that as is and honestly for the most part that's you know what we're gonna leave now okay so go to settings you want to go to controllers now in here you want to if you want to enable mouse you need to click this feel free to increase the sensitivity of fine you usually do multi-tap again i will have separate videos covering these more in more depth but yeah multi-tap for more than two players so let's say on a game like fifa or the wrestling games and again for the most part you can you know you know leave this as is but feel free to enable some of the advanced functionality for like dualshock 4 dual sense and by default it has two controllers the you have hotkeys as well the hotkeys are really useful for doing stuff like saving states you know increasing you know the speed of the game so fast forward so so feel free to add these safe you know these hotkeys so now you go to controls you just select dualshock 2 and in settings you can you know invert it increase the sensitivity you can have macros as well so you can have a combination of keys you might want to press one button it does x and circle for like tekken for example with you know eddie and law and okay we bind in you literally just click on a key and if i press that i'll press h it's now h i'm going to go back to up and if you again if you wanted to do mouse you just click that and if i go on to press in off i'll move my mouse up move my mouse left for example uh, but i'm going to go back to automatic mapping there we go and um, i don't want mouse mapping anyway if you did have a controller you would be able to select you know motors as well and the motors are for vibration you know speed purposes and again i can't properly show you because i've got i'm zoomed in but at the bottom on the left you've got you know profiles you can create a new profile benefit of that is you can have a different configure you know input configuration for different games different players different genres and for setting up controllers like i said i'll have separate videos covering that but a lot of the controllers are pretty plug and play these days like ps4 ps5 is plug and play bluetooth or you know cable what else is plug and play a lot of the xbox controllers are plug and play as well for bluetooth you'll need obviously one of the new ones or a wireless adapter but otherwise they are literally just plug and play so that's it now if we launch a game up let's go to crash nitro car well, I go to there and I can go to system from here you can go full screen if you want to I'll leave you know it, I won't put it on full screen I'll go to system and go to do, 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 do. Uh, can I not fast forward here I'll just do it let's do this do, 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 do. I'm trying to think so there we go so I'm gonna get a little further and then I'm gonna increase the internal resolution. So you can see how much of a difference that makes. Space is, I'll just press save. That's why you stop, that just pauses it. Okay, so again, I'm going to let it go into the game and then I'll increase the internal resolution to show you know the benefit of that. So actually, I'll just leave it at this. So you can see how jaggedy it looks. I'll go to settings, go to graphics. You can do this in-game, which is pretty cool. And you go to rendering. Say if I do it to, okay. As you can see, looks a lot nicer, a lot cleaner. And again, like I said, feel free to enable fxaa as well where is it 
and overall this will be you know one of the best combinations that you can get So as you can see the crash logo, how smooth that looks. Text is different just due to the way it's rendered. It may or you know may not, depending on how they've set it up, you know, programmatically speaking, and you know, it when they made the game, it may or may not, you know, increase in terms of the internal resolution. But everything else looks pretty good. And you know, we can so on my bar, if you press escape, just forgot to show you showing this you this now. Uh, you can you know, go to the settings, you can save state. But if you have that, so I click save state. Let's go shut down. Yes. So go to crash nitro cart. So as you'll see in a second, it starts to start. If we go to system and go load state, or if we go escape and load state. It takes me directly to where I was. The benefit of that is I don't have to wait in, uh, I mean, I don't have to go through all the starting procedure. I don't have to wait in the game to get to a point where I can actually save the game, save it wherever I want. And yeah. I'm going to have a quick go. I don't know how well I'm going to do on a keyboard and mouse. Obviously, I put it at 4K, but you may need to lower it, or you might be able to hire it, depending on your setup, you know, your computer and your monitor. Because if you've got a small monitor, it's only natively 1080, then there's not much point rendering it at 4K. I don't know what I think R1 is for jump. <laughs> so I can't skid otherwise. Just too good. And if I was to press escape, I could save state here. Check the game properties. Switch to software render. Don't recommend that. You can change disk. You don't need to do this for like a game like Crash Nitro Car, but some other games I think. Final Fantasy, maybe Dino Crisis, but definitely Final Fantasy have multiple disks. And if you get to a point where it, says, where it says you need to chain the disc, this is what you would do. You click chain disc and that's it. And feel free to go to the settings here as well. Honestly, I prefer messing around with the settings through the other interface. But if you've gone full screen, this will be the main way of doing it. And that's it. So I'm going to close the game. And you can exit and save as well. So that's a nice little feature. So you don't have to save it first. Then do that. You can just do it all in one go. So that, that's setting up PCSX2. The 1.7, this is 0.3965, but you know the newer QT versions. If you have if you have any questions, feel free to post on the Discord group, link in the description. If you have you need anything, feel free to post on the Discord group as well. Otherwise, just post in the comments down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, hit that sub subscribe button. Let me know what other PCSX2 and emulator videos you would like to see next. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.